Question 2a. Define transition elements. This question is very easy. You need to mention two things here. Species that form one or more stable ions with incomplete D subshell. I give you one example. Iron 2 and iron 3. Both ions it can form from the metals and different oxidation state. And the D subshell for the iron 2 is D6. Iron 3 is D5. So both they are in complete D subshell. That's why we say that iron is the transition element. Part B. Sketch the shape of 3D Z square. Uh, this one is very specific because it's asking a particular D orbital. For this uh, D Z square orbital, you need to draw two lobes along the Z axis and you just need to draw a donut ring right in the middle. So this is how the D Z square looks like. Part C. Manganese 4 oxide acts as a heterogeneous catalyst in the decomposition of H2O2. Part 1. Explain what it means by heterogeneous catalyst. Very easy. The catalyst that in the different phase as the reactants. So for example, if reactant is gas, so the catalyst it can be solid or liquid. Solid or liquid. So this is the heterogeneous catalyst means. Part 2. Describe the mood of action of a heterogeneous catalyst in a reaction. So for this one, um, it's better for me to show you this one. Uh, it's actually uh, involved three major steps. First step is adsorption. The reactant need to attach or adsorb on the surface. Once it's uh, uh, absorbed on the surface or attached to the surface, so the bond will get weakened. So I mean, now if let's say this reactant okay, attached to the surface and another reactant also is attached to the surface or the this uh, another reactant so we know that the bond between the atoms means here the reactant will get weakened will get weakened so eventually they will break and the new bond will form between these two reactants after that it will form a new product okay which is the the, the green and the yellow particles now and these particles or these molecules or products will dissolve from the surface. So again, it's involved three major process. Adsorption of the reactant on the catalyst surface. And after that, reaction and the desorption from the surface. Okay, so this is a standard answer. Uh, so first, adsorption of the reactants to the surface of the catalyst. Uh, then after that, the bond must get weakened first. Uh, bond in the reactants will get weakened, which will lower the activation energy of the reaction. Uh, after that, the reactions will occur, bonds formation is happen, and form products. After that, products will undergo desorption. Part D, manganese uh, seventh oxide, MN2O7, can be made by the treatment of KMNO4 with concentrated sulfuric acid. And after that, the MN2O7, it will decompose and form the manganese 4 oxide and a colorless diatomic gas. So these are the two different reactions. So now it's asking, construct equation for both reaction, reaction 1 and 2. Reaction 1 is relatively difficult. Uh, so what you need to do is, uh, 
uh, to balance the equation accordingly. Some of you might confuse uh, what to put and which one to put. Uh, in order to get the correct answer, at least you must start with this ionic equation. So the MnO4 negative means uh, this one, KmnO4, will form the Mn2O7, the manganese 7 oxide. Okay, you start with these two. After that, you balance it. Balance equation, because here, there is a uh, two manganese, so here you need to times two. So manganese already balanced, now we need to balance oxygen. Two times four oxygen is eight oxygen. So here is seven oxygen, therefore this right hand side you have to add one H2O to balance oxygen. So now oxygen's balance. Oxygen's okay, eight atoms. After that you need to balance hydrogen. Balance hydrogens using this one, the H plus. So is two H plus then everything is balanced. So this is the ionic equation for this reaction one. If you want to give the complete reaction equation, so you give this one. So you need to in involve the spectator ions, okay, which is the potassium and the sulfate. So just put the potassium KMnO4 with H2SO4, form the Mn2O7, with H2O here and the salt, potassium sulfate. Reaction 2 is easy because I already told you it's formed two products. Manganese 4 oxide means it's MnO2. This one is negative 4, this one is positive 4. Right? So therefore you get this MnO2 plus O2. So it's 3 over 2 times O2. So you get this balance equation. Part E. Aqueous manganese uh, 2 ion shows similar chemical properties to the aqueous copper 2 when react separately with sodium hydroxide and with concentrated HCl. So therefore, you need to use what you learn in the copper 2 ions, the reactions of the copper 2 ion for this question. They are similar now because it's telling you this, right? Part 1. Write the ionic equation and state the type of reactions uh, between this uh, hexa aqua manganese 2 ion with the sodium hydroxide. So this one is obviously a, a precipitation. The complex ion will react with the hydroxide to form manganese hydroxide and all the H2O now is being uh, exchanged or uh, this substituted. So you will form this 6H2O. Okay, therefore, this one, because it's formed this precipitate, so the type of reaction is precipitation. Part 2. Write the ionic equation, state the re type of reactions um, uh, when this hexa aqua manganese 2 ion with concentrated HCl. Okay, please recall back what you learned in the copper uh, ions. So it will form copper chloride, isn't it? Copper chloride 4, 2 negative, right? So same thing happened to this uh, manganese ion. So this uh, hexa aqua manganese 2 will react with this uh, chloride to form this complex ion, new complex ion, okay, and plus 6H2O. All the waters now being exchanged. So this one is no precipitate form. So you can mention it's a ligand exchange or ligand substitution. Okay, this one, they are both ligand, chloride and H2O. Right, so it's exchange. For part 3, table 2.1, it shows some electropotential. So this uh, question you need to, uh, you need to analyze uh, uh, accordingly what is one. 
So for this one, he is asking, suggest the formula of the manganese species form when the MN2 positive reacts with chlorine. If we want the chlorine to react with MN2 negative, so we must choose this half equation and this half equation. Okay, because in order for the chlorine to react, it must go this way, means it must gain the electron to form chloride. And means some species or some equation need to produce electron which need to uh, gain by the chlorine. So therefore, the equations with MN2 positive, they are this and this, these two. So we cannot use uh, this, um, the first one because the first one, the manganese is actually need to gain electron, means the MN2 need to gain electron, which is not going to really happen. So we not really choose the first one, we must choose the fourth uh, half equation. Why? Because this half equation, MN2 positive, will release two electron when it's shift to left. So can these two half equation now react or uh, is uh, works? So answer of course yes, because does this chlorine's half cell is positive one point three six, which is more positive than this half cell, which means the chlorine will gain the electron, so it means it's in reduction form, and this one is less negative than the manganese ion need to need to form the manganese oxide. At the same time, it's release electron. So the redox reactions will happen because the E not cell is positive. So it means this is cathode, this is anode. Cathode minus anode is still positive value. Okay, therefore, again, we must choose the second one and the fourth half equation because these two reactions is the one that happens spontaneously, is feasible. Right. Okay. What you will see is uh, state the type of reaction. Uh, so it's a redox reaction, of course. So it's a release and gains electron. So it's re this uh, redox reaction. Uh, formula of the manganese species that form. Because now the MN2 positive, after it shift to left, then it will form this manganese oxide and release two electron. So you see manganese oxide. So it's MnO2 that form. I hope you understand this part. Thank you.